Welcome to the Therapist Uncut Podcast, where off-the-clock therapists who happen to be friends share their uncensored thoughts about real life. Join us weekly in spreading positivity and making mental health relatable through casual conversation, inspirational stories, and real talk with friends who happen to be therapists. Please welcome your co-hosts, Nikki Young and Alyssa Nahara. Welcome back to Therapist Uncut. We are so excited that you are joining us today because today we have a very special guest for you. Her name is Natalie Silva, and she is a licensed marriage and family therapist. Natalie holds space for women from all stages of life who are desiring meaningful change. Natalie offers individual counseling to support the treatment of emotional pain, relationship issues, life transitions such as adulthood, motherhood, marriage, divorce, and everything in between. She holds space for the courage it takes to ask for support in order to live a life of freedom and self-acceptance. Together, she works with her clients to work through a gentle, compassionate lens in a therapeutic space to heal old wounds in order to help them move forward. Awesome. Natalie, thank you for joining us. We're so excited that you're here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's kind of a thing. Uh, We've been hearing from a lot of our listeners that this is a topic that they uh, very strongly identify with and would like to, to hear some fantastic information on. So you were, of course, the first person that popped into our head. Um, you do a fantastic job of talking about these things uh, on your platform. So we were very excited to have you here. So we have all of our interview questions ready for you, Natalie, but I want to start with telling our listeners what your morning was like getting ready for this podcast interview. <laughs> I feel like you're just going yeah. fits, right? <laughs> it really does. I actually was thinking about that as I was getting ready. So you want to know all like the, the nitty gritty of the, the things that I had to do to make the this happen? The version, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, yes. So for any uh, working single mom out there, this is for you. I know your mornings very well. My daughter is currently on a like Zoom babysitting session with her grandparents out in the <laughs> living room. House is all locked down, locked safe. That kid can't go anywhere. I have to have our 130 pound massive here in the room with me because when he barks, it really scares her. And then she'll come running in and telling me to, you know, trap him in here. So he's in here. And I'm just waiting for the pool guy to come so my dog can see him through the window and then he'll probably start um, barking. But yeah. yeah. And then she that's the snacks. part. That's the part when you jump up to calm the dog down and we realize you don't have pants on, right? Because yes, yes. okay. I am wearing pants. Okay. They good. are they are yoga pants. So I'm half professional here. But yes. Chat got pants on today. Successful morning. Well, we appreciate you so much, Natalie, because we know it is not easy to do a stuff from home. And typically we tell our guests to please make sure that you eliminate all background noise and all distractions. And for Natalie, she's like, fuck, you get what you get. Like, you can't eliminate yeah, the children. Yeah, just, yeah. No, dang, I know. I have, yep. I have a window right here and our kids are actually right now at physically at their grandparents. But when they're not, there's usually a child that likes to come stand in the window and just see what I'm doing. And it's so hard to just, <laughs> she's not there. She's not, okay, yes. she's still there. What does she want? I don't know. She's fine. <laughs> yes, the, the fact that we can be in two places at one time is just really a magical parent talent. You know, <laughs> and what a great segue for our listeners for what we're going to be focusing on today, which is mom guilt. If you're a parent out there, if you're a mom, a, an aunt, a grandparent, you probably have experienced some of this mom guilt. So we are going to start with. I know we told our listeners that you are a licensed marriage and family therapist, but why don't you tell our listeners what that means? Yeah, so I'm a licensed mental health professional um, trained in providing psychotherapy to treat and support um, emotional issues like depression, anxiety, relationship issues, stage of life transitions. um, And I do that in my private practice. Speaking of in your private practice, what is your I know you kind of shared this a little bit in your bio and your introduction, but tell us a little bit more about your specialty. Yeah, so I specialize in um, women's mental health, and I also specialize in perinatal mental health, which is the treatment of um, like pregnant and expecting mothers. Perfect. And I think that I actually don't know what, and if you're comfortable sharing, what drew you to the specialty? How did you wind up working with that population? Yeah, so I've been dreaming this dream up for a really long time. Alyssa, you know, we've talked about it for for years now, and I'm finally here. Um, I've always been an advocate for women's needs, and I've always identified myself as a feminist. And so when I 
sat down and really got in touch with who I wanted to provide treatment to, uh, who my ideal client is, it was, you know, the women in their 20s and 30s struggling to find themselves or to rediscover certain parts of themselves that they've lost along the way. Um, so that that's been that's been the goal to create a space for women where they can come and they can get back in touch with that. And you're like, I just want to stop for a second. You said, and I'm here now. That's a good mm-hmm. feeling. Yeah, that's a good feeling. It. Congratulations. It a good feeling. Thank you. And not only are you here professionally in your ability to provide all of these clinical services, but you're here on the Therapist Uncut podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> need, like, I need a drum so that I can do like a <laughs> drum roll at certain points. So we need our own sound effects. Maybe we'll work on that for season three. Yes. <laughs> then, we have a, then we have a dance party. <laughs> <laughs> now, Natalie, in your work as a mental health professional, what are some common themes that you see come up in the population that you work with? Yeah, I loved this question. It really allowed me to kind of sit and reflect on what are the themes that I've seen in the clients that I've worked with over the last year or so. And one of the major ones that I felt was a lot of guilt, which is perfect for the podcast and what we're going to talk about today. A lot of feeling like we have to make ourselves small, that we ask for too much, that we can't ask for help. That's a sign of weakness, attachment. But what I say, like attachment issues, attachment um, wounds. And like self-esteem, just feeling really not great about ourselves. Kind of in that hunt for um, always fixing too. Lots of problem solving arises in the work that I do. Perfectionism. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfectionism. I'm guessing personally, as a professional, as a parent, Mm -hmm. a lot of high standards we put on ourselves on. Yeah. Especially in relationships too, which often leads to that codependency factor, right? Feeling like I'll just take on everybody's stuff but we're not giving um, space for our own needs. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you mean by attachment? So I look at a lot of the problems that clients come to me with through um, an inner child lens. So we look at like what happens when you were a child, what needs were not met that are showing up in your adulthood right now. And I go through a reparenting lens. We then come in as the adult self and we reparent that inner child that likes to come out in the form of anxiety, depression, self-doubt, anxiousness, worry, uncertainty. And we heal that inner child wound so that we can function in a healthier way as an adult. So I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. We are coming into this podcast specifically to talk about this topic. You mentioned it as a prominent theme. Is mom guilt a real thing? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And I think it's not just isolated to motherhood. I, I think a lot of fathers feel ex, um, guilt and uncertainty about being able to live up to the expectations that are put on us as parents. But I know we're specifically going to be talking about mom guilt. Um, I think it's important for us to point out that if you're a dad and you're feeling this way, you're, you're not alone in that either. One in 10 dads experience postpartum depression. It's It's a real thing. There's hard science evidence to support that this is absolutely a real thing a special shout out to all of the dads listening to our mom guilt episode today because we see you too (laughs) way to hold it down guys right the grandparents raising kids right i think it's more of the parenting guilt but it's taken on this term of mom guilt just like we've dubbed Mm -hmm. all of a certain category of people karens right so it's it's a term that we are all accustomed to and identify with that describes this phenomenon uh but yes absolutely generalizable generalizable to any caregiver really yeah and natalie Mm -hmm. i love that you differentiated like yes mom guilt is a thing but it's not only pertaining to moms so that's Mm -hmm. one myth associated with mom guilt what other myths would you say come up about mom or parent guilt Oh, man, I also really <laughs> loved this question because I sat with it and I I did some research to find out, OK, I know my own story with mom guilt. Um, you know, I'm raising a four year old, so I've got lots of it. I'm elbows deep in it. But it was so fascinating. So a lot of it, it comes naturally that once you have that baby, you'll just know what to do. You're, you intuitively, you'll figure it out. Well, they come with an instruction manual too, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, all those baby <laughs> books that you read, the people that did that, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that you'll instinctively just know what to do. The, the one that hit really home for me was that you'll immediately bond with your baby. I didn't experience that. It took my brain a few months for it to recognize that's my baby. <laughs> that's the same <laughs> baby that I carried for nine months. Um, you know, so, so, 
any time where we feel like we have an, an extraordinary um, level of joy or expectation that we have to experience as a mother and we fall short of it because we're humans, I think that that can definitely lead to the spiral of I'm not a good mom. I'm not a good parent. I'm ruining my kids. The other one that stood out for me was that there's a right way to do this. It's a bunch of bullshit. There's really not a right way to do that. But everybody knows the right way. Your neighbor across yeah, the street true. knows the right way how to parent your kid. Your parents knows the right way to... Everybody on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> Everyone on the... Yeah. Pinterest knows the right way how to feed my child and transition yeah. them into their bed. Like everyone around you apparently knows the right way, but you... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, having a baby will bring you closer to your partner. I think that that's an expectation that really that short is, after having a baby you realize yeah. that's not always the case right and then they wind up in my office getting couples counseling because that is such a huge myth that let's have this baby and gl- grow more connected and it's just going to do all these wonders for our relationship when in actuality that is i would say not the norm <laughs> so it is a painful reality it's a painful reality to sit in a room with your partner and realize the dream that i had for our family is not what i thought it was going to be can you talk a little bit about the myth of when my baby comes, everything's going to be rainbows and sunshine and I'm going to have all these beautiful pictures. Unicorns. Yes. My hair is going to be done. My makeup's going to be on. My house is going to be clean. My baby's going to sleep all night. Well, if you ask Instagram and Pinterest, that's the case. So. <laughs> yes. 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 And, and um, I think we see a lot of that influence happening through just social media, TV, movies. I do appreciate the realist lens that social media offers as well. Cause I think we are getting a snapshot into the reality, but it's a very small snapshot. It's a new up and coming movement of motherhood on Instagram where we are showing up as ourselves. How often do parents get on social media and you're like, damn, why can't I have that much fun when I go to the beach? And really as a parent, you're like, I don't even want to go to the beach because I have to pack everything and then they're going to cry and they need snacks yeah. and they need this. My kids eating sand, which is going to be a problem later. (laughs) My best friend's child has discovered that she absolutely loves manure. They live out in the country and have a lot of farming stuff. It's her favorite. And at that point, just let it roll. Uh, You know what? (laughs) (laughs) I can't. Oh, my God. I can handle the sand. I can. But no. That's too much work. I took my daughter to the beach last summer and it was like, I'm almost having a heart attack rolling this wagon up this sand dune. It's like, whose idea was this? This was a terrible (laughs) idea. You can go with your grandparents. (laughs) I love it because this is so, so real. Uh, Natalie, Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a list of all the different kinds of moms that might be listening. And then I have a Mm -hmm. follow up question. Okay. Yeah. I want you to think about the working mom, the work from home mom the anxious mom, the depressed mom, the perfectionist mom, stay at home mom, new mom, married mom, single mom. I want you to apply all of these different moms and or fill in the blank with dad, parent or caregiver. Mm -hmm. And talk about how the guilt plays a role in all of these different subcategories of parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it boils down to the fact that guilt is rooted in a feeling about a behavior. And shame is what is born out of guilt. So we feel guilty because we didn't get to breastfeed our baby the way that we wanted to. And we had to switch to formula at six weeks. We feel guilty about but the feeling of shame about being a bad mom. My body was not able to produce enough nutrients to sustain my baby after birth. I'm a bad mom. That's the shame piece, right? Oh, my baby, you know, co-sleeps with us, you know, because it's too anxiety provoking for me as a mother to have babies sleep in their own crib, even though people have a certain belief that that's what's best for baby, right? To be in their own space by a certain amount of age, like it's a math formula that we're talking about (laughs) here, you know? And so I think what that impact is, is that we have a lot of parents who do not trust themselves. We are always looking outside of ourselves as the parent what do I do? Tell me, give me guidance. I don't know what I'm doing. And I think, yes, at a certain line in the sand, you need to step in and get some professional support. But you can figure this out. You are a good parent. And just because you weren't able to breastfeed or because you chose not to sleep train does not mean you are not a good parent. You are not ruining your children. Right. And it's this balance between, okay, we don't know everything and and they weren't birthed with this instruction manual and we may not know exactly what to do when all of a sudden we have this infant and child or even teenager in front of us. Um, So it's this line of 
not judging ourselves to reach out and gain that support, information, education, but also when you do have a sense of what you want to do about this situation or handle something to then, like you said, trust yourself within that and not necessarily require that validation or uh, stamp of approval from society. And Natalie, is there any benefit to carrying this mom guilt? And if so, at what point does this guilt become unproductive and harmful for somebody? I think guilt can be useful very briefly and it has to be reframed. We cannot live in the guilt. There is no personal growth that is born out of shame and guilt and criticism. But when I'm working with a parent or a new mom who is struggling to just feel like she's a good mom, I often remind her that that fear, that worry that you are going to ruin your kid, it's because you are a good mom. If that feeling was absent, I would have bigger concerns. And it really helps bring them back to the centeredness of I'm doing a good job. I am doing the best that I can. Natalie, can you repeat that? Yeah. Only because it is so important. (laughs) I am doing the best that I can. I am not a bad mom just because I am struggling with X, Y, or Z. Can you hear that silence? (laughs) Right? Also, as it reminded me of in a therapeutic session, when there's just a moment, you just got to be quiet and let it sit there for a second. It's super powerful. And you, you talked about balance, Nikki, that it's important for us to know when we um, step outside of ourselves and ask for help. And I think that that's a really important thing to remember while we discuss this, because mom guilt to me is very different than baby blues or postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety. That would be my line in the stand. If you are starting to feel like you have less interest in your baby, um, thoughts of wanting to harm your baby or yourself, then that's where we are in problematic areas. If you believe to your core, you're not a good mom and it's not just a bad day, it's been weeks of this feeling, we need to step outside and get some some help and support. That's such a great point, Natalie. Can you help our listeners differentiate and understand the difference between those areas that you just talked about? Yeah. So mom guilt for me is, um, it's temporary. It's that day where you're like, dang, yesterday I was feeling good. And I, I, you know, I made the snacks and I, you know, made my bed and I got ready and I took a shower and baby is good. And postpartum depression, it's, it's just more intense. It's more frequent. And it's a core, it's a core belief that no matter what other people are telling me, I don't see myself that way. And I think that's where that shift from mom guilt, it becomes problematic when it becomes our, how we see ourselves. And then it determines the choices that we make and the decisions that we have. And how I would imagine also how you're able to function as a parent, right? If it's mm-hmm. starting to get in the way of your relationship with your child, with your spouse, mm-hmm. with your family, with your friends, with mm-hmm. yourself. Speaking of getting in the way, in what way does guilt, if any, play a factor in your personal relationships, either with your parents, I'm sorry, with your uh, spouses and your partners or your even your friendships or your peers and your kids? I think it can uh, lead to a lot of guilt and or not guilt, resentment and anger and bitterness and comparison. This mom looks like she's got it all together. I would also say that it leads to a lot of isolation, secrecy, new moms, especially really struggle with coming out with these dark thoughts. Nobody told me that I was going to have thoughts of bad things happening to my baby or me doing bad things to my baby. So there's this secrecy that happens of, I just need to hold this in. This is so uncomfortable for me. If I share this with anybody, they're going to think I'm a terrible mom. These thoughts are terrible. But we have to remind that new mom of, you know, thoughts and even feelings are not facts. Just because you think something doesn't make it a reality. And this just fits so perfectly with our whole goal here at Therapist Uncut is to make mental health relatable and to make it a topic of everyday conversation because these things are so real. This is not a one-off experience. This is probably the norm. Like this is very common, but we don't talk about it. You know, similarly to one of our past episodes where we met with, um, you know, Morgan Brown talked about grief. People don't as a society generally talk about grief, but yet, hello, (laughs) you don't get through this life without it. So most individuals, a lot of individuals are going to deal with parenting. And so this is a topic that we have to start talking about so that we can support our parents and our families and um, reduce some of that guilt and shame that comes with having thoughts, feelings about these things. Yeah, there's just so many variables that I think before you're living in it or live in this world, this mental health world that we live in, 
that you can't even account for until you're you're in it and you're experiencing it. I think it's also important as we're talking about mom guilt to remember the moms that struggled with fertility or maybe experienced that loss of the baby or had to seek outside sources to get that dream. So there might be this elevated expectation of when I am finally there or adoptive moms. I hear this a lot too. When I'm finally there and I finally have my dream that I've worked really hard at for, you know, X amount of time, it's going to be the solution to everything. It's going to be everything that I dreamed of. And so oftentimes then you can see an increase of that mom guilt or even postpartum depression um, because it's, it's hard. It's, it's difficult. It comes with its own stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you talk about moms and, and parents, I'm going to generalize this to parent, anyone as a caregiver, right? You have the opportunity for this, this cool solidarity, right? You guys could, everyone could be a team and work through these things mm-hmm. together, but uh, what are some things to get in the way of that? How do moms compare, you touched on this already, but really compare themselves to others as opposed to gaining that strength? I think that the focus gets put a lot on baby and not on mom. One of you know the things that I love to remind even just people in my own circle is that every time a baby is born, a, a new mother is also born as well, especially if you're a first time mom. Um, but oftentimes the attention goes to how do we support baby with that, that quote on the internet that's like, you know, everybody's holding baby, but who's holding the the new mother? I think we just can forget about her needs too, right? And then, oh my gosh, if you think about new dads, they're just like <laughs> more down or new partners, I should say, even more down the line of a priority. They don't get half as much attention and love and support as, you know, new moms do. And in regards to the guilt and shame piece, you know, my experience from, from, just life and hearing individuals talk is it's, it's tenfold oftentimes for fathers because they are expected, you know, at the societal level to be the band, just suck it up. And, you know, you're not supposed to be super emotional and all of these various societal factors that come into play that make that just even more unfathomable, unfathomable for them Mm -hmm. to have to share, Hey, (laughs) I didn't bond with my child or, Hey, I'm terrified right now. Um, any of those things that we've talked about, it's, it's magnified. Absolutely. Well, I would love if our, if our listeners can really take in this episode and probably listen to it a few times because there's so many great gold nuggets, Natalie, that you've touched on for our moms, for our dads, for our caregivers in general. I'm wondering now, we've talked about how you can recognize this mom guilt, what it might look like, how it might flow into your personal relationships. I'm wondering how we can help our listeners overcome this guilt. Do you have any tips for them on that? Absolutely. Acknowledgement and acceptance. We do not have to jump into problem solving or making these feelings go away. Some of them are just, I don't want to say unfixable, but they are what they are. But again, that doesn't make you a bad mom. Just because you had an expectation of wanting to breastfeed your baby and you have to use formula, you can't change that. We have to feed baby. A fed baby is, you know, the best way, right? And acknowledging that and accepting that is key. It's the the antidote to guilt and shame, right? If we sit in that spiral of how do I fix myself so I don't feel this way, I fear that it just makes the feelings and thoughts worse and more intense. So are you trying to say that not everything in life is going to be perfect? And sometimes we have to acknowledge and accept and sit with that. And then that in and of itself is going to help us heal and move forward. Yes. yes. Which ties all the way back to one of the myths about parenthood is that enjoy every moment. I don't (laughs) want to enjoy every moment. Sometimes that kid annoys me. I love my children to death, but I absolutely do not enjoy every moment of it. No. No. Can can I tell you that when all of this remote work, I I felt the guilt because I'm a mom. When this remote work started happening, one of my clients said, I'm going crazy. How do you do it? I was like, girl, I don't Don't do it. it. I don't. <laughs> Can I tell you that during the entire pandemic, I worked from home two times and every time it was a fucking shit show. <laughs> it was awful. I am lucky enough to have grandparents that will watch my children while I came to the office. Where am I recording today? My fucking office. Because it is hard to work from home. And then I'm yes. like, dang, I, I can't even relate to my parents right now who are experiencing this because I chose to use my option of not having to do it. But hands down to you, Natalie, to all of the parents that are working from home. I know that Nikki does it often. 
her kids are in the background. <laughs> we can see a little head pop in sometimes. And that's just the reality of what it is, right? Yes, so acknowledging yes. and accepting. Absolutely. And remembering that women's purpose is far greater than, you know, creating life for other people you have a right to take up space as a mother it is okay to prioritize your own needs whether that be work relationships you know exercising yoga I don't care what it is but it's important if it helps you be happy healthy stable and functioning then it is important to your children and I think that that's where parents can um, get it backwards well once I get everybody else fine you know, then, then I can focus on myself and it just doesn't happen. If one of your kids is not okay, or not having their best day or your partner, you're not satisfying, you know, their need of the day. It's all right. They'll be okay. These people are not helpless victims in your life. You are important. Natalie, when my kid turns 30, is my guilt going to go away? <laughs> no. <laughs> are you sure? No. I'm very sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, don't, I think it's just <laughs> there is no finish line. So we better get real familiar, real fast with that feeling of guilt because it's a reminder that we are good moms and we do love our children and we are invested in their well being. But we can't live there. We can acknowledge it, but we cannot live there. And the whole, a large contributing factor to this mom guilt is wanting your children to be good, right? Wanting them to be okay. And, you know, there's a reframe that I found for parents that is helpful sometimes is by modeling, prioritizing yourself at times, by modeling, modeling, prioritizing your relationship with friend, family, yourself, partner, whatever it might be, that's a good lesson for your kids, right? So that mom guilt might pop in and say, well, instead of, you know, having tea with your best friend right now, you really should be X, Y, Z. Your kids are also seeing you take care of yourself and they're going to grow up with that message and they're going to grow up with that value that they also then deserve to be taking care of themselves. Yeah. But that's what a secure relationship is rooted in, right? Is it's an I, a you, it's like the Venn diagram, I, you, and then a we in the middle. And we have to have all three parts for it to be a secure attachment. Heck yes. Mm -hmm. So speaking of as the couples therapist on the screen right now, I always want to ask how can, and this is going to generalize too, not just a partner, but how can a partner and or parent and or friend relative support a new parent who's experiencing this mom, dad, caregiver guilt? Help her sleep, bring yeah. her food. <laughs> if you're talking about new moms, like we've just brought home baby sleep, and food is very important. Okay. We're going to bring it, you know, was that Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Basic, basic needs. <laughs> basic needs. I think if you're a support system or a friend, be relatable. And don't wait for the new mom to tell you what she needs. She is so in her own world. She's not going to be able to identify. I need you to come over and do my laundry. Just offer. What I'm here. Tell me what you need. Mm -hmm. And if you need me to go away, I can do that too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Remind them, you will not hurt my feelings if you tell me that you want me to leave. For partners too, going back to when we're talking about needing a higher level of care, partners need to be ed educated on the signs of postpartum anxiety and depression. Know what to look for when your partner is not just experiencing mom guilt, but when it is something more. And when you are. Right. Mm -hmm. I think Absolutely. wrapping it back around. Natalie, Absolutely. do you have any go-to resources to help somebody become familiar with those signs that maybe we can add mm -hmm. to our show notes? Yes. So I received my perinatal mental health training through Postpartum Support International. It is a fantastic organization that is all over the world. Every county, I believe every county, I know at least for San Joaquin and Stanislaus, they have uh, care coordinators. You can get in contact with a coordinator and they will find you a trained uh, maternal mental health provider to work with you and your family. And their website has virtual groups, support groups, resources. It's fantastic. And even their Instagram um, and Facebook platform, they share a lot of really awesome resources. Very cool. We've covered so much in this topic. And you said relatable earlier. And that's exactly what this podcast is, right? Our goal is to help make mental health relatable. So if our listeners took nothing else from today, except this one thing, what would you say that one thing is most important to remember? What I want your listeners to remember, or to take away from their time listening to this podcast is to remember that women birthed every single individual on this planet. Without us, there would not be what we have going on here. And because of that, 
we need to show kindness to other people, but especially to ourselves. We need to step into that power of what that means to literally birth every individual on this planet. Thank you, Natalie. And if our listeners would like to connect with you after our episode, how can they do that? Where can they find you? So I'm on Facebook and Instagram, pretty active there. You can find me at natalie.silva.lmft or, and my website is listed on there too. And we will have all of that linkage in our show notes as well. Um, But Natalie, one more time for us, what is your website? It is um, www.nataliesilvalmft.com. Perfect. And as you've had a glimpse just within the last 30 minutes into Natalie, she's an excellent human individual therapist support. Uh, So if it sounds like you might be at that level where you could use some outside support and kind of a second set of eyes on the situation to remind you of some of these things and to help you work through some of this mom guilt, postpartum, whatever you might be dealing with, Natalie's your gal. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, guys. It was so awesome. It was such a gift. Hopefully Natalie might be able to come back on for another yes. episode in the future because as you're talking, I'm like, oh my gosh, we don't even have Let's time to dig in. Uh, Let's get into this. Yeah, stuff later. I, I thought we were gonna ask after, so we can ask, ask you now, I guess. We'll put you on the spot. Will you come back and join us Absolutely. again? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Yes. <laughs> she said yes, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us on the Therapist Uncut mm-hmm. podcast where we help make mental health relatable and a part of your everyday conversation. If you have not yet, please subscribe to our podcast and check out our show notes at therapistuncut.com. We will see you next time on Therapist Uncut Podcast. Take care, guys. Thank you for joining Therapist Uncut, a production of AMP Smart Business. To learn more about Therapist Uncut and stay up on upcoming episodes, please subscribe and follow us on social media. As a reminder, although the Therapist Uncut co-hosts are licensed therapists, they are not your therapist. This podcast is not intended to substitute professional mental health counseling. If you need professional therapy, please contact your local provider or primary care provider. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of Therapist Uncut.